viewers, Rectangular back with another haul video. This time we have some flight stands or stages. This one is called the Act 4 and they are made by SH Figure Arts or Bandai or Tamashi. I can never get these products straight. I don't know who which one is the product line, which one is the manufacturer, so please forgive me. I'm new to imports and don't know how to properly identify who the manufacturer is and um, what product line they're, they fall under. But if you had seen my SH Figure Arts Iron Man and War Machine reviews, you may have noticed that those figures do not come with flight stands and since they are somewhat fragile figures um, especially the paint job is very delicate on the Iron Man figure I don't want to use wire flight stands to get those figures into poses um, because I don't want to scratch the paint so I picked up a three pack from Amazon I think ended up being about fifteen or sixteen dollars with shipping because um, my uh, total purchase was over twenty five dollars and um, it's a pretty good deal you get three of these and I'll flip it around on the back so you can get an idea of uh, what you can do with them Try to don't tone down the light a little bit so you can see each one has a base and then they each have um, three arms and three sets of attachments so pretty flexible as far as what um, what kind of poses you can get your figures in um, very awesome you can uh, actually put two figures on one stand at a time or just put one figure on one stand and, uh, and have the stands connected together you can build a whole like base platform I don't know if any of that stuff is showing up on camera there you go so those are just the uh, examples on the back of the box alright so Maybe at the end of the video I will uh, stick one of those figure arts Iron Man figures on there so you can get a better look see how useful they are. Alright, let's go ahead and move on to the next item. Next up we have some head casts that I got from gentlemen that I've been getting most of my casted heads from and they're a little bit on the small side but he has by far the best selection of different characters to get heads from these are all DC these are all based on DC figures the first one on the left I believe is Mr. Terrific the second one is Black Adam the one in the middle, I think that's Captain Atom. And next one is Jon Stewart, and the last one is Aquaman on the far right. So the reason I got the Mr. Terrific and Jon Stewart head casts is so that I can use them for my Black Panther. And since I wanted to use them for both my existing Series 8 Black Panther and the new Return of Marvel Legends Black Panther that we're getting in the next wave of Marvel Legends. Um, I don't think the pegs are going to be the same on those two figures. One's from Toy Biz and one's from Hasbro. Typically the Hasbro figures have been um, a larger ball peg. So I wouldn't be able to just get one head cast and be able to swap them back and forth 
I might be able to make it work if I made the hole large enough to fit on the larger of the two and then just use some sticky tack. Um, but I wasn't sure which head I was going to like better, so I just went ahead and got um, one of each. And let's see. Um, yeah, so that way I can sculpt a, um, a hole to conform to either one and um, I won't have to uh, do a whole lot of um, swapping around or worrying about sticky tack or anything like that or tape or um, stuffing toilet paper or something in there to make it work and the Black Adam um, I thought that would make an excellent um, uh, Norman Osborn, the existing Norman Osborn head that I got um, the idea from uh, Bob the Odd. It uh, looks a little bit too babyface. Let me grab that real quick here, just for comparison. It's a little too um, benign looking. He's just. Uh, He's just got more of a serene look on his face, and um, I thought this uh, Black Adam looked a little bit more menacing, so a more like Norman Osborn. Um, and also, this character doesn't have this figure does not have a, a widow's peak, which um, Norman Osborn does. Just for comparison, got the screaming. Norman Osborn, and that's going to look funny coming in the camera like that. But uh, yeah, you can see this is what the character's supposed to look like. And um, yeah, it's not not that close a resemblance there. Whereas this guy looks a whole lot more like Osborne especially the eyebrows and you can see that it's hard to get these uh, head casts to light properly and it's a little bit on the small side but uh, I think it'll work um, it really only looks odd from the side um, it's a little you know I think all the DC heads are kind of flat faced um, so it's a little bit on the small side but from the front I think it's gonna look fine ah, and there he goes so moving on um, we have the Captain Adam I believe I'm not familiar with DC characters so forgive me if I'm getting this wrong and that one I think would is gonna make a great uh, Hank Pym the uh, classic um, Hank Pym had kind of a um, kind of a big hairdo uh, so I think that's gonna look great um, I think a lot of people forget that the Ant-Man that we have is actually the Scott Lang Ant-Man and is not Hank Pym um, and last we have the Aquaman which um, I did end up getting uh, an Aquaman figure for a pretty decent price thing. I got him for 10 bucks shipped or nine, nine and change shipped. So basically this will just be a backup if I, um, if I end up using that, um, Aquaman head that's from the factory for a, a Hank Pym or somebody, then, um, I can always paint this, uh, with a different colored hair, and, you know, make him a, um, totally different character. All right, let's go ahead and uh, check out the next item. Next up, we have Marvel's Destroyer from Thor, the Mighty Avenger movie line figures. And technically, this is not a Marvel Legend or a Marvel Universe figure. They did make a Marvel Universe figure that's got a gimmick uh, button in his belly that uh, you press on and his uh, um, the helmet lights up 
or glows. Uh, this one is 8 inches tall. That one from the Marvel Universe line I think is just 3 and 3 quarter inches or 4 inches tall. And again this is still a little bit smaller smaller than it should be. Um, actually I, for some reason I thought that they made a 10 inch version of this and if somewhere in my mind I was thinking that that's what this is going to be even though every you know I knew that it kept saying eight inches so um, I might end up trying to make a custom out of it I think Solid Snake showed his recently where he added uh, articulation to the arms and uh, the hips I think he gave ball joints to both areas so we shall see. Um, I still have quite a bit of other customs to work on and um, kind of feel like I need to get some more experience before I take on something like this. But in the meantime it's still a pretty good figure especially if you have them in a background scene. Um, and I'll go ahead and take them out of the package and we'll do a quick size comparison. So here we've got the figure out of the package and as you can see he's still a little bit on the short side he is taller than the Return of Marvel Legends Thor on the left and the Toy Biz Marvel Legends Thor Buster figure but I still think he would be perfect at 10 inches um, haven't, let's see, let's get out my measuring tape they say he's 8 inches and that looks about right. Yeah, I would say he's just shy of eight inches. So, not a bad figure. You know, it's pretty horrible articulation. I wasn't one of the folks lo lucky enough to get him on clearance at Ross or TJ Maxx. So I got him on Amazon for, I think, 15 shipped. So it was a little more than I wanted to spend, but hopefully down the road I will um, turn him into a pretty nice custom. Alright, let's go ahead and move on to the next item. So being that I'm a pretty huge fan of Thor, and I knew that I wasn't going to be satisfied with that 8 inch destroyer, I kept looking for the Toy Biz Marvel Legends version, which is even smaller. It's based on the same body as the Thor Buster, but he does have uh, really good articulation. So if you want to get him into fighting pose, this is really the figure that you're going to want. So I kept searching on eBay and finally got lucky enough to find one that was mint on card and that didn't have a reserve so I was able to snag this for $45 with shipping which is a pretty awesome deal right now if you go on eBay um, I think there's one loose for about that price and uh, I've there was a guy on eBay I'm sorry, on Facebook, who had one uh, loose, and he wanted $60 shipped for it. So, yeah, this thing is uh, pretty hard to find and pretty pricey. So, um, 45 is, I think, a little more than it's worth, more than I wanted to pay. But um, at least that I, when it being mint on card, I know that the joints should be in good shape and so should the paint. So I'm going to go ahead and crack him out of the package and uh, compare him with the other destroyer I just got. So here we have both versions of the figure side by side for comparison and as you can see the old Toy Biz Marvel Legends figure is significantly smaller but it does have far superior articulation the figure on the right only has five points of articulation, so it's pretty worthless other than just standing there looking good for a vanilla pose. 
Um, also, I prefer the head on the less articulated figure on the right, the Hasbro one. Um, I just think it looks a little bit better. I know in some versions of the comics it does look more like the figure on the left, and I know that he is, you know, noticeably bigger than Thor, um, just not as big as he was in the movie. Um, I could be mistaken, but I don't think he's supposed to be quite that big as he appeared in the movie. But, um, yeah, I'm still very happy. I'm glad that, um, I picked this guy up, um, since I do love Asgard, all the Asgardian characters. Hopefully in the future, with the new, uh, with Thor 2 coming out, that we'll see either a Marvel Select version of the Destroyer or um, a Build-A-Figure, but that's kind of a pipe dream. We typically don't get what we want from Diamond or Hasbro, um, but one can hope, and if we don't get a Destroyer, hopefully we'll get an Odin Build-A-Figure. Um, but anyway, this thing, um, I'll move this guy out of the way real quick, just in case you haven't seen any reviews. You know, it does have a uh, waist swivel, uh, ab crunch, which works pretty well. Can look up not too bad. His head does look back just a tiny bit. So that's pretty cool. And he does look down not too bad. I think if you uh, were a Marvel Universe collector, this thing would be pretty awesome. Uh, it would be pretty on the big, on the tall side, I think. But um, not too shabby. And of course, it's got the wrist articulation, hands, clothes on both sides paint is very nice. I really like the uh, silver and black wash they have on the whole thing. Only part that's loose on mine is this uh, um, upper sh the shin swivel there. The ankle pivot is awesome. That is awesome. Do miss that on a lot of newer figures. Fortunately Hasbro has been trying to bring that back really love being able to do that people don't know how valuable that piece of articulation is when you're trying to do ACBA and very nice high angle kick on that ball joint leg there he is on the back I mean it looks metal it's just really cool how they got all the different washes of uh, silver and black on there. Haven't been able to tell if it's uh, um, silver plastic, black plastic, or gray plastic. I'm not gonna try to scrape the paint to try to find out, but I think they did a really good job. I like the blue that they put on the um, the effects parts of his armor and the eyes really well shade of blue there very cool okay hopefully you guys liked the video share with your friends leave a comment below and if you haven't already please subscribe thanks so much for watching talk to you guys later